Hello, this is Rob Veach from V Paranormal. I recently purchased a uh, new device um, that we're going to be using on our next series of investigations, and it's called the uh, the REM pod with shadow detection function. And you could uh, purchase this. I purchased this from uh, GhostHunterStore.com, and that version is the version that has the red plexiglass top. You could also purchase it from uh, the inventor site Gary Gelka at pro-measure.com and that version is the same electronics but it has a glow in the dark top on there. So what's a REM pod and what's the shadow detection function? The shadow detection function that's built into this will actually detect minute changes in light and the unit comes with two different red LED illuminators. There's a long range and a short range one. The bigger LED is the one for longer range. It's got a longer focal length. And the smaller one is for shorter ranges. This will project the light onto this sensor and probably 25, 30, 40 feet away is fine for the uh, smaller sensor. Probably go 50, 60, 70 feet for the larger one. And once you line this thing up, with this light, you actually want to take the light and turn it so that the main focal point is a little bit off center to this sensor on here. But once you do that, and and something interrupts this this light field and creates a shadow on the sensor, the thing will alarm and the center LED will light up and it'll change its tone. If it's a decrease from a shadow, it'll drop down the note. And if it's an increase in light, it'll increase the note. These outer LEDs are for the REM function. So the shadow detection is unique and it uh, will detect minor changes in light. Um, there are some theories that shadow figures or entities can move around in a room and if they pass through this zone that you've set up, this thing will be triggered and it'll alarm you. There is on the bottom of the unit a tiny button and it's called SDD sensitivity. And when you first turn the unit on, the unit will actually uh, calibrate itself and it will be at level one of sensitivities. There is five sensitivities on this unit. To increase the sensitivity, you push this button and you get an acknowledging beep. Now I'll try and do that right now, I'll turn it on. So if you hit this button right here, that's sensitivity two, sensitivity three, sensitivity four, and sensitivity five. If you hit it again, it goes back to sensitivity one. The inventor, Gary Galka, recommends that you use it at sensitivity three. If you lose count of how many times you push the button, just turn it on again, or turn it off and on, and you could do that calibration again and go to level three. I have tried level three and it works great. I've also tried it up to level five. It works great also. Um, the shadow detection function uses the center LED alone and the REM pod function uses the outer four LEDs. I'm going to demonstrate the shadow detection function in my basement here with an infrared light. I have the uh, REM pod with shadow detection on and as you can see if I go near the antenna I get a response breaking the E field. The uh, shadow detection sensor is lined up and about uh, 25 feet away, at the end of the room there, I've got the uh, small short field, short length sensor transmitter that comes with the uh, REM pod. So if I uh, break the beam right here with my hand, you can see it responding. And you can hear the tone decreasing when I block the light. And then you can see the tone increasing and the green LED, you can't see the green, comes on and the tone increases the frequency, letting you know that the light dropped and then the light increased. And I can go all the way back to about 20 feet, 20 feet back, and I can break the beam. And you can see the same effect. Now going on to the REM function itself, uh, you have a choice of the REM function alone 
or the rem function plus the shadow detection. And there's a little micro switch on the bottom for that. What the rem function is, is there's an antenna built into the unit and it actually has a little electromagnetic field generator inside this unit. And it measures changes in the field strength of that electromagnetic field. Uh, various things can affect that from your hand, uh, with moisture, pieces of metal. If you're too close to fluorescent light, it'll be affected by that. But some people think that entities can break that field either through static charge changes or mass, mass changes in this field by them interrupting the electromagnetic field that's around this device. Um, I'm going to show you later different materials from wood to plastic and we're going to see what effect it has on this, if any. The LEDs that are on the REM function on the outer portion here and they vary in color and they also have a tone associated with each one of them. So I'll turn the unit on right here and it's going to be, it's going to be reacting because I'm I'm near the device. When you first turn it on, there's actually a diagnostic that goes on. And you hear that you hear that double beep that's acknowledging that it's working. There's a 12-bit CPU inside here. So if you look at the LEDs themselves, they're responding right now because I'm actually touching the base of it, and the moisture in my hand is breaking that electromagnetic field. If I touch the antenna, you see they all light up. And that's the strongest break in the electromagnetic field. But it's very sensitive to about four, six inches out. Um, even on the top, it's sensitive. So it's great for anything that breaks this electromagnetic field. So I'm going to demonstrate what the REM pod is sensitive to and what it's not sensitive to. So this is a piece of wood. And as you'd expect, there's no change in the electromagnetic field as you go around the device, so nothing really happens with that. If that piece of wood was very high in moisture, it would affect the REM pod. This is a piece of PVC plastic, and as you would expect, there's no break in the electromagnetic field, so it doesn't detect anything. Next, this is a piece of, this is an aluminum, aluminum ruler. As I go near, as you can see, it's affecting the electromagnetic field and as it go closer obviously or touches it, it's going to go to full range. This is a piece of uh, stainless steel and if I go near the REM pod as expected it's affecting it's breaking the electromagnetic field. This is interesting this is a very powerful magnet on the end of a piece of wood and it doesn't affect the electromagnetic field and I'm not quite sure why that is but as you can see, it has no effect on it, unless I actually were to touch it. And of course, it sticks to the antenna. But in terms of the electromagnetic field being broken, it doesn't have an effect on it. I wanted to show the REM pod that it's also sensitive to static energy. So I've got this piece of bubble wrap, and I'm going to charge it up, and I'm going to go near the REM pod. And you'll see that it'll respond, it'll to the charge as the charge is discharged, creating a a disturbance to the EMF field, just like my hand does here. I'm going to charge this up now. So you can see it's responding to the charge on the plastic, the bubble wrap. And this isn't this isn't my hand because my hand is way back here. This is the actual bubble wrap. So something with a charge, a moving charge, especially, will affect the REM pod.